I hate stupid people and lazy people, but I love games. And I just, I get very frustrated when I, when I encounter people that, that don't feel the same way. If you don't love what you're doing, how the fuck are you doing it? A lot of times you'll, you'll talk to people that say, well, I want to be X, Y, and Z. I am what I want to be, right? Which is working in an industry that I have loved since I was, I don't know, two. Uh, and this is all I want to do. Like, if this is all I ever do, I'll, I'll die happy because it's exactly where I want to be. They contacted me last January and they said, we want to increase the quality of our narrative content. Um, and that was kind of their general statement. There's sort of two aspects to Alice. There's the narrative talent group, which is my group, and then there's the mocap and sort of all the kind of technical things. We kind of are a co-production unit, so we work directly with the projects, like hand in hand with them. The, the writers on a project sit with the team, work with the team, are part of the team. Alice is a resource. So it's really about getting all the resources, getting all the tools, having everything in one place, so the team can just come and say, here's my dream, and we make it happen. The first thing that they do is come to me, and we talk about defining their game. What is your game about? What is your story about? What are your, what's your level design going to be about? What's your mission design going to be about? I think a lot of people don't realize is that you know, stuff like mission and level and game design are, in my eyes, a narrative tool as well, right? That's, that's another way in which story is told. When I build the, the scripts for the AC games, I will take what's known as a mission design document and literally copy paste it into the script and then use that to build out my slug lines to define the action and then back the dialogue into that. So the script is literally grown out of mission design documents rather than vice versa. We have a technology group that writes all our proprietary tools and all those tools are all a part of the actual engine of the game. So this is Oasis. It functions not only as a script writing tool, but it also has connections to all sorts of different departments, whether it's the AI or localization or voice design departments. It's sort of one-stop shopping for a lot of our narrative needs. Uh, I'll open up this tab, which is scripts. Uh, it's then divided into the single player uh, main campaign and then the world missions or the side content. Then you can go down another level and it shows you all the different sequences followed by the different present uh, missions and where they fall in chronological logical order. And then as you start opening these up, you will see what looks just like a film slash television script. They will develop the script, Corey will look at it, he'll write all his notes and he'll often go page by page and he'll do, you know, the whole arc, whatever people need help with. I'll get the script and I will just sit down and try and read it once fresh, not, not touching it, not marking it up. And then after that first pass is done, I will sit down and it'll be like a more methodical, you know, read through. And it's as simple as, you know, highlighting stuff and writing crap in the margins. And it'll be anything from trying to find ways to, to shorten scenes, to fixing typos, to instances where plot points or narrative details might become murky or confused and it's just whatever, you know, whatever there is to write about, I, I take note of it. And then they'll review it and then the writer and, you know, the creative director, the mission level designer, those people will incorporate those changes directly on their own. It's not my place to tell people, you know, what to write or, or how to write. It's only to offer my feedback and opinion on something and it's really theirs to do with as they wish. I think it's important to let people decide what they want to do and, and how they want to do it rather than force it. As a writer and as someone who has been up at three o'clock in the morning, pulling his hair out, going, oh, you know, he understands how hard it is to really put your heart and soul on the paper. It's just sort of taking all the stuff I've learned and experienced and trying to find a place where I can, can sort of share some of those lessons with the other writers at the studio. Because I oftentimes felt like there was nowhere for me to turn during production, that there was no place I could go for, for help or guidance or if I wanted someone to take a look at my stuff or if I wanted feedback uh, or advice. And so it's in some ways me trying to, to fill a need for something that I wish I'd had. You know, we've had a good response so far. Like, I think actually every writer has come up here at some point and said, I need your help. I would love it if I could show you my work and you could tell me what you think of it. The idea is that we are here if you need us or want us, and if you don't, then, then that's fine. 
The creative process, if it's done right, is terrifying. If you're making something that's safe, if you're making something that's just some cobbled together pastiche of like, oh, I saw Scarface, and then I saw Lethal Weapon, and I want to make a badass guy, rah, rah, and then you end up with like derivative crap. Nobody wants that. You want to be in a place where you're terrified and your heart is on the page. And in order to do that, and in order to do that safely, we want to give you a place where you can be absolutely terrified and know that you're gonna be okay.